Now, I want to shift gears and talk about Arrow. That's one of my favorite projects you're working on right now. And you get to play Slade Wilson, Deathstroke. Were you familiar with his part in the DC Universe before you got the role? Mate, I arrived at Vancouver Airport having done one audition in Los Angeles for the role. And I read for a guy called Holloway. Now, when I arrived at Vancouver Airport, my manager said, hey, look, you've just been E.T. Entertainment tonight. I've just released a, a, a press report on the Internet about your being cast in, in the role. So I, I looked it up and it said, Manu Bennett cast as Slade Wilson, Deathstroke. I immediately got on the phone and I rang my manager. I said, I, I've made a mistake. <laughs> playing this guy called Holloway. I'm, I'm not playing Deathstroke. And then the guy behind the, the counter who was working on immigration went, did you say you're playing Deathstroke? And I went, what? <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know. I think so. It's a little, the, the, and he goes, oh, man, Deathstroke's like the badass of the DC comic world. So I actually got informed by the uh, uh, by Canadian immigration. <laughs> That's all. Deathstroke is it one of the coolest characters in the DC universe. Oh, you know, you know, I've, 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 of course, since you know, read my material and I'm getting into the uh, the notion of you know just how he's going to uh, impact upon you know the future of the show. This is Slade Wilson. Now you got to remember that that you know there's been no there's been no sign off yet about Slade Wilson being Deathstroke. Uh, they've, you know, and, and, you know, the producers are giving me no hints at all about if it happens, when it happens, where it happens. That's all still a big seat, uh, to be, or a mystery to be unraveled. But, um, so far, Slade Wilson has been, you know, this interesting character on the island that, uh, that has been teaching, you know, um, uh, Steve Mel, um, you know, how to, how to become the arrow. Now, you know, I mean, one of the fascinating things about going into Arrow was that when I read Arrow's script, when I when I read the script, you know, it was so different to Spartacus. You know, I mean, Spartacus was like an opera, and when, when I when I read the Arrow script, I was kind of like almost like, oh, this is kind of not kind of as 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 uh, I don't know. At first, I thought it was not as dramatic, or at first, I thought it was kind of like some sort of. But then I realized what it was, you know. And I mean, uh, I, I guess after doing four years of Spartacus, it's just, it's just a different piece of sheet music, you know, and the rhythms change. And it's, and it's like, it's a modern piece. It's like, it's like pop music. You know, I've been sort of caught up in the classical world and doing a theatrical sort of production. And, um, you know, at first I was kind of like, oh, I, I, don't, I sort of don't know how to make this this work because it's kind of, but, but, what, I, but what I had to realize was that it's, it, it is, it's like sheet music. I've been invited into a series now that's a lot more modern. It's a lot faster paced. It's, uh, it's more realistic. Um, you know, the, the writer, Andrew Kreisberg, said to me right from the bat, he said, look, Manu, you know, we, we love you as Crixus, but we, we haven't invited you here as Crixus. We've invited you here to play Slate Wilson. You know, and that, that, so we want a distinction. We don't, we don't, because I mean, I was, after four years of, of playing the goal, you know, um, that that's kind of how my voice was operating as soon as I turned on my acting sort of, uh, you know, button. But, um, but yeah, I, I kind of, uh, you know, I needed to learn the tempo of, of the show. And I have to say, I've, 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 I've started to really get into it and being able to, you know, embrace it as, as a brand new character where, where, you know, I, I don't have to play dirty Harry too. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, 100%. So you don't even know at this point whether or not we're going to get you in full Deathstroke mode. I don't know if I don't know. Okay, does that help answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> I think I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave it up to the we'll leave it up to the uh, the, the wonders of, of vision to, uh, to to bring it to the uh, audience uh, in due course. If that shall be what will happen, I don't know. It's all up to the producers and Andrew Kreisberg to to come up with that little uh, pearl of wisdom. And uh, but yeah, at this stage, uh, I, I, I do know one thing. I do know season two is uh, is definitely full of some uh, some big surprises and. Uh, and you know, uh, I just hope that you know all the people that have that have been so generous and and, and uh, complimentary about about Spartacus, uh, you know, uh, are going to be able to tune in and, and kind of um, and and you know see me see me shed the the skin of Crixus and uh, and take on this new role. It's a you know it's a it's a it's I'm privileged. I'm a lucky guy. One last thing before I let you go. Some people may be surprised. Do you play all these tough, menacing roles? 
but you're also a ballet dancer, and you yeah. and, and you quit rugby to play ballet. Did you get razzed for that? Well, listen, mate. You know, I think I think behind every everybody who would be presumed to be a tough guy is probably some kind of hardship story, you know, something that made them hard in the first place or whatever, you know. I've, I've been through a bit of a life of hard knocks, you know. My, my mother and my brother both were killed in two separate car accidents two weeks, um, you know, either side of each other. So that happened when I was like 15 and, um, you know, I, I kind of had to figure a way how to, how, how, to, how to cope with that, you know, at that young age. And uh, I had a girlfriend at the time who was a ballet dancer, you know, and she, uh, and she said to me, hey, you know, come on. Come to class. Come, come and come and dance. You know, come and spend your time, you know, doing part of the work, which was dancing with another woman. You know, dancing with a ballerina. And to tell you the truth, like at the time, you know, that's exactly what I needed. You know, uh, I could have, you know, I could have gone and sat in a quiet corner and or drank beers and or whatever, and and tried to solve the problem some other way. But you know, I'm fortunate enough that um, there was a sensitive person who understood that I was suffering and she gave me some wise advice and I went and I went and did that. Now, at the, at the same time, you know, uh, I, I literally got sent off to a boarding school uh, for a period of time because my father was suffering as well. And, um, you know, when I got to that boarding school, these guys were like just hard out. It was a Maori boy boarding school in New Zealand. And um, it was very much like Spartacus. I, I, I went there and they, they wanted to take me to task. Uh, I was a at that time, I, I was a national athlete as well back in Australia, um, and you know they, um, they, you know, I got chosen to be on the on the rugby team, but none of the guys thought I deserved it. So the biggest guy came and beat the hell out of me, you know, and put me into the infirmary actually, you know, and uh, didn't want to leave the infirmary because I was terrified of this this guy called Norm Hewitt, and um, you know, these other guys came in and said, "No, you got to come out, man. You got to come out and prove yourself. You got to, you know, got to come out and train and, and you know show that you can be in this team, you know." So, so I did, you know, and I spent three months. I remember my father gave me this jumper when I first went to that boarding school, and it was too big for me. And then when I got back to when I got back to um, to Australia at the time, I got back to Australia after being at that boarding school. It was really tight on me because my neck muscles and my back muscles and all this other stuff had been built up to to be good enough to be in this team, you know. And I, I did. I, I I had to work to be good at rugby to survive at that school. And, uh, you know, and then when I got back to Australia, I was so good at rugby that I got chosen to be in the national schoolboy trials. You know, I made the state team and I went to the national trial. Well, I, I was, I was to go to the national trials to try out for the Australian schoolboy rugby union team. I committed to do Swan Lake with my girlfriend at the time and, um, at this, at this, at, the, at this dance school. And, uh, I, I was committed to it. And so I couldn't go and try out for the Australian rugby union team because I had to go and put on some tights and, and dance in Swan Lake. <laughs> and and you know what? My friends who know me, they know that's me. And they, yeah, it's one thing to say you're a you're a man. It's another thing to say you're a bloke or as a boy or a whatever, a friend or a whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, mate, it's uh, it's it's how you cope with things and and, and you know the, the way you confront life. You know, and I, I think I was pretty lucky to have those those opportunities to get over problems in my life and to be able to, to solve them in ways where I, I guess I wasn't afraid to confront my emotions. It's one of the things that sort of has given me some good stead in this industry, you know, is that I can confront my emotions and I can use them now in a positive way rather than a negative way. You know, something that, can, something that could have consumed me, I sort of, uh, I made it my gloves. <laughs> <laughs>